I love growing lavender. It's such a fantastic garden plant and the native bees love it. It's packed with blue banded bees, all here attracted to these beautiful flowers. And they're not the only bee that's here with them because in amongst them is the cuckoo bee. And I'm so excited to find this bee because it's the first time I've ever seen one. The checkered cuckoo bee is also known as cloak and dagger bee. And it gets this name because of its really sneaky way of life. It has a really close connection to the blue banded bee. And in fact, it is a kleptoparasite of the blue banded bee. And this means that it steals from it. The blue banded bees spend their lives collecting nectar and pollen, which they lay as provisions in their nesting chamber for their young. But the checkered cuckoo bee stealthily sneaks in and lays its eggs in the chamber once it's been fully stocked with provisions. The checkered cuckoo bee egg hatches quicker than the blue banded bee. It eats all the food and then it will create a cocoon and pupate. In the meantime, when the blue banded bee young does hatch, it's faced with a very fat pupa and no food. So it starves to death and the only creature that will emerge from the nest will be the cuckoo bee. Checkered cuckoo bees somewhat resemble their host species, but they're brighter and shinier and more iridescent. They also have thicker exoskeletons and larger mandibles to defend themselves in case they get caught in the act trying to lay their eggs in their hosts' nests. It could be that those bright metallic colours dazzle and give them some form of camouflage in the environment. It's a fascinating and yet complex relationship between these two species. The lifestyle of the cuckoo bee shows us that there are many ways for species to survive. And while they may be detrimental to blue banded bees, they play an important role in pollination and they may also help to keep the numbers of blue banded bees in balance. Checkered cuckoo bees are so vibrantly blue, as are the stripes on these blue banded bees. They're both spectacular insects to have in the garden. There are also a lot of different butterflies that are attracted to the lavender. There's the garden whites and the tiny blues and various other different species of butterfly. To encourage species such as this into your own garden, you can grow plants that they love, such as this lavender, and provide them with nesting habitats by creating bee hotels. It's a great way to establish an insect-friendly backyard. I'm Catherine Kermode. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the next adventure from my wild backyard.